one of the real highlights of uh, my career uh, as a as a writer and a broadcaster was working at the Montreal Gazette with Red Fisher, the Hall of Fame hockey writer. And, and one of the real treats was every now and then being able to to talk to Red, just to talk, just to pick his brains about about stuff. And I remember one time, and I know Red's spoken about this particular relayed this particular story off. And I remember asking him one time, the same thing everybody asked Red Fisher, all right, you've covered a ton of guys. You've seen a lot of guys. Who is the best player you ever saw? And Red would get grumpy, and I've gone through this a million times, and you know, I, it's the same thing. And then he starts rattling off names. And, of course, you go Richard and Beliveau, Lafleur, and I saw How, I saw Hall, got the little Stan Mikita while he's going on. And I said, and he sees me nodding, and he says, you're thinking I'm missing a name, aren't you? And I said, well, yeah, the guy I kind of grew up watching, and I would put in there, and Red said, look, I, I, I did it deliberately. He said, the only guy that pulled me out of my seat in the press box every time he had the puck was Bobby Orr. And I think that pretty much sums up people's impression of Bobby Orr. He was, for me, I mean, I'm 53 years old. I'm not going to date Bobby. I'm 53 years old. But Bobby Orr was the first guy that really made – that, that got you out of your chair, at least for me. He was the first guy that got me out of my chair watching uh, the game. And I'm very pleased to welcome author, <laughs> Hall nice. of Famer. <laughs> nice being with you. Thank you. Bobby Orr. The book is called Orr, My Story, uh, and uh, Penguin Canada is publishing it. And um, the book is on shelves right now. And, of course, it's flying off shelves. I was going to say it's flying much like picture in the front. Bobby, thanks so much. Yeah, nice being with you. Thank you. Thanks so much for doing this. I, First question, um, why a book, why now? Well, I just maybe thought it was time to uh, put on paper uh, some of my thoughts and feelings, uh, uh, go back uh, to how I was brought up, uh, my minor hockey days, uh, talk about the people that uh, helped me along the way, I had a lot of support, uh, talking about the sacrifices your family makes for you so you can... Uh, chase your dreams um, there's a little bit in there that I think young hockey players that uh, you know their dreams might be like mine were to play in the NHL there's some little information in there about uh, challenges you're going to face and so on there's a little bit in there about parents with that child that's going to be the next one uh, how it should be handled uh, my father's advice to me was uh, go out and have fun we'll see what happens and uh, I wish more parents would would think like that Leave your child. It's a it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It takes time, and then I can guarantee you one thing: if your child keeps that love and passion for the game and um, uh, keeps working hard, uh, he'll have a chance, and only a chance. Very very few make it. If it were easy to to make it to the NHL, everyone would be there. It's not easy. So, hey, let's all relax. It's a marathon. If your child's the one, he'll get a chance. If if he keeps that, and, and you'll see throughout the book, I, I talk love and passion. Same mm -hmm. as you, Jeff. You have a great love and a great passion for what you do. And if you didn't have that kind of love and passion, you wouldn't do the the quality job that you do. And that's the same with, with an athlete. There's a, a line in your book you talk about um, the good times are what I choose to remember. Yeah. And, and what I liked about the book is the fact that you deal with all the you know you deal with all the issues, yep. the state of the game, Alan yep. Eagleson, all this yep. stuff. But it's done in a way that it's. It's you doing it. Yeah, that's that. It's you doing I, I, it. I set out to do that, and uh, I talk a lot about my my, yeah, my young days. I mean, yeah. my my days of minor hockey are my fondest memories, and and there's a lot in this book about the kids in minor sports and and the responsibility we adults have to make sure it's a, a great experience for every kid in every every minor sport. Minor sport in a community is for fun and recreation for everybody. And it should be a great experience for every kid. And unfortunately, that's not the case. So there's a lot in there about the responsibility that coach has, mm -hmm. uh, that official on the ice has, that parent in the stand, in the stands, the 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 president of the league should have rules. Uh, this is how we're going to uh, uh, handle ourselves. These are the rules we're going to play under. This is the conduct that we we expect. We have no control what goes on at the NHL level, but we're supposed to have control in our kids' programs, mm -hmm. and, and there's a great deal in the book about that. How concerned are you, and, and you know, we're joined by uh, Bobby Orr in studio. Uh, Bobby Orr's book, Or My Story, is now available. And I had a conversation with, <clears throat> with Brian Burke one time uh, about, and Brian Burke and I didn't agree 
uh, on a lot of things. But not many people agree with Brian Burke on a lot of things. But one of the things that one of his causes that I found really important uh, is the cost of hockey. Oh, no question. Uh, and I think a lot of hockey people. I mean, I, I think Bobby were. were we're scared that it's becoming a rich person sport or oh. that you have to bankrupt yourself yeah. to do it. Does that concern a, a, you? A, a survey came out recently, like Bauer and Hockey Canada did yeah. a survey in Canada. And the, the number one reason the kids aren't playing is because they aren't having fun. Mm -hmm. And number two was cost and time. Uh, I didn't have a new pair of skates until, I don't know, I was, I forget how old I was. When, when mm -hmm. I was, <laughs> was very young, but we all, I had hand-me-downs. Uh, we couldn't afford new skates. And and a friend of my father's bought the skates for me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we used to do fundraisers. I mean, we used to go raise money uh, so that we could buy sticks and equipment and so on. Uh, equipment exchanges. You don't see that anymore. The kids mm -hmm. the kids are seeing these. You know, the big brand companies yep. aren't going to be happy with this. But, you know, they're trying to sell their, their most expensive. There's a lot of equipment out there that's a little cheaper. But it, it, it is a problem. Uh, cost is a problem. But... Uh, exchanges. Mm -hmm. the last, did you ever, have you seen an exchange? Not that. I mean, not, not as much if you look at the, I guess there's a safety issue with with helmets. Yeah. Now you don't want to have a helmet. Yeah, that, well, the helmet. We're talking about everything. Skates, yeah. pads. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's no way these kids are breaking these. Yes. <laughs> skates or gloves. They're not breaking them down. Mm -hmm. They're 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 perfectly fine. But you just don't see that anymore. I really think organizations should get together and and start that that equipment exchange. Uh, that's what we did. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't have new equipment every year and it is expensive. And you know, the kids are, some of the kids are playing 12 months of the year. Not necessary. It's not fair for the parents, the costs, the tournaments. It's just, you know, I never went to a hockey school with a like turn pro. And I was an instructor. Mm -hmm. Uh, we played baseball in, in, in the summertime. Mm -hmm. other I want, I want to see kids play other sports, uh, 12 months of the year for one sport, not necessary. Hang around other kids. You know, listen to other coaches, uh, hang around mm -hmm. other parents. I think that's a healthy thing, and I and it's not necessary for kids to play twelve months of the year. But exchanges, there there are lot, some things we can do to 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 help in, uh, in the cost of the equipment for playing. You know, with the knee injuries, uh, with the way your career ended, um, of course the the Alan Eagleson. It's remarkable that there's a real lack of bitterness in this book. Oh. I mean, my instinct. I think a lot of our instincts would be to be, to be a bitter ex players. You know, well, yeah, I, I did well, but man, I, I, you know, I was disappointed that I couldn't play longer. Yeah, I was terribly hurt when I went through the Eagleson thing. My life today is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, Peggy's my wife. Peggy is as healthy as a as a horse. My two sons, Brent and Darren, are are, are doing very very well. Darren works with me in the in my uh, agent's business is doing very well. Our son is in Florida with a good dog daycare boarding grooming business. Mm -hmm. We have two grandchildren. Do you have grandchildren yet? Not yet. It's no. really special. Yeah. <laughs> we have a, we'll be four. Alexis will be four and Braxton will be three. That's, that's heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so no, I'm, I'm 66 years old. I'm, I have no time to be, to be bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm telling the story, uh, you know, on the Eagleson issue. I mean, I mean, I didn't want that to be part of the book, but yeah. You know, the publisher insisted, and they're right. I had to say something because I haven't said much over the years. But uh, I, I, I'm, I don't have time to be angry or bitter right now. Well, and, Things are too good. And, and I got the sense from reading that part of the book in particular, and I know you talked to Peter Mansbridge about this, and I, and I think you, uh, you used the... Um, I, I, I think you used the, this particular phrase, but it, you, you talked about... You approached it as a violation of trust, I guess. Absolutely. I mean, and, this, and that's, this is a man that was like a brother to me. And, uh, uh, I left everything to him. I trusted him. I had a number of people come to me over the years and say, you know, you got to get away from this guy. He's, he's just not a good guy. And I say, Hey, get away from me. Uh, mm -hmm. Al's my friend uh, and I trust him. And, and when that help, when that happens, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I got to the point, Peg and I got to the point. We just didn't want to be around the man anymore. We just mm -hmm. want to get away from him. Uh, I knew I, Financially, was you know, I was in a little trouble. I, all I want to do is get away. Many mm -hmm. think that that my issues are in the charges against them. There's nothing in there about mine. One, all I want to do is get away from them. Yeah. 
too. I didn't have the money to hire a lawyer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you you went down that road. Uh, uh, Your choice of lawyers the first time no, wasn't it? <laughs> and and uh, you know, it took the U.S. government five years. Yeah. To get him, almost five years to come to the U.S. to face some charge, and it was yeah. and, and they made a deal. So uh, he's a very powerful man here in Canada. I mean, he uh, they they weren't got doing friends. They, they, he's got a lot of. Uh, very influential friends, and he's very strong. I would, there's no way I had a chance to, yeah, would, would, would have a chance to win so I'm up here. So, uh, I just wanted to get away. We did start it over at, with the help of a lot of friends, family. Mm-hmm. Uh, things have worked out very well. I, I guess you would find out who your real friends are. Oh, yes, in that, yeah, and uh, in that case, you know, it, it was a difficult period, and I had a lot of, a lot of great friends, and uh, they were, they were very, very helpful, and of course, family. Uh, my family, my wife, especially Peggy. I, I guess there will there would be those that would say that I'm a little difficult to live with sometimes. Mm-hmm. I can't believe that. Don't you? <laughs> I don't get that impression either. Uh, but Peggy was a rock. It was it was a difficult period, but yeah. we we worked through it, and uh, today we're 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 fine. Uh, I want to talk about. The, there's a lot in this book about the the state of the game and about mm-hmm. some of your thoughts about what can be done. The state of the NHL game, what can be done to make it better, and some of the issues there, but. Before we uh, we take a break, I did want to ask you the, the bit about the own po- possible ownership of the Boston Bruins. As I'm as I'm reading that book, partial ownership of the Boston Bruins. To me, this kind of got to the point about trust more yep. than anything. Because I, I'm not going to put myself in Alan Eagleson's head, but I read that and I'm thinking this is a guy who knew that if you became part owner of a team, he was going to lose control. Well, I mean that that could have been, but but again, it was his job. Yeah, he's my advice. It was his job that. To help me select the best offer, mm-hmm. <laughs> and maybe you know it, you know leaving yeah. Boston. I mean, as soon as I was, as soon as I couldn't play, we went right back to Boston. We love right. the city, so uh, and you live in, you know, you've got a place in the Cape. I have a place in the Cape, yeah. So we love uh, New England, and, uh, and and it was his job to, to to make the best deal for me, and he told me the best deal was Chicago. And, you know, he was a very good friend of Mr. Wirtz, who was mm-hmm. the chairman of the board of the NHL, on and on and on. <laughs> mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, but it, as, as I said, it was, it was, it wasn't easy talking or writing about yeah. that part, but I had to do it. Um, I, I'm fine with it. I'm, 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 I'm fine with it. And, and, are, and I would guess as, as head of the Aura Hockey Group, um, well, you'd be a good person to have as well, a, as I mean, just as an I, advisor and pay but attention. It's, but it's not only athletes. I mean, there's a lot of people you yeah. read about every day being being scammed and people stealing their money and so on because we don't pay attention. Right. I didn't pay attention, and it still yeah. ha- and it, it, still it still happens. Happened. Look at NBA players, Major League Baseball. It still happens. It's 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 you know it's your money. You work for it. You know, follow it. Figure out what they're doing. Ask questions. And if if your advisor or financial person is upset that you're asking questions, well, you better ask more questions. <laughs> but pay attention. I didn't pay attention. And, and that's what it's all about. Uh, go and learn about, a little bit of finances. It's important. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that, that's the biggest thing. Just pay attention. 